For this video, you're going to need some paper, scissors, a pencil, and three different coloured pencils. So in year four, our next chapter of learning is time. This will be a great unit to practice at home. You can write up your daily timetable by the hours and the minutes and work out how long you spend on each activity. To help you with this, the first task we'd like you to do is create yourself an analogue clock. An analogue clock displays the time through the use of a fixed numbered dial and moving hands. See if you can go and find any analogue clocks with moving hands in your house. You can pause this video now and see how many you can find in your house. Right, well I hope you managed to find some because we're going to be making our own now. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is get yourself a piece of plain paper. It doesn't matter if it's white or if it's coloured or if it's card. Um, cardboard from a cereal box, okay, as long as it's got a blank side. You're going to use something circular from around your house, so it might be a plate or a bowl to draw around so that you can cut yourself out an even circle. Your circle needs to be big enough to fit our numbers of our clock inside and to be able to put our moving hands on it. Okay, so I'm going to ask you to pause the video now whilst you do that. Right, next step we need to do is we're going to label our numbers on our clock face. Okay, our numbers represent our hours. So if we have a look at our, our clock here, this will give us a little bit of a helping hand. So we should know in year four that our 12 goes at the top of our clock. Okay, so that might be the first one that you want to write on. Our six goes halfway around our clock face. So use your knowledge of fractions to find halfway round your clock face. Our three goes a quarter of the way around our clock face. From our 12, it goes a quarter of the way around our clock face. Let's see if you can find where that goes. And our nine goes three quarters of a way around our clock face from our 12. See if you can find three quarters of the way around our clock face. Okay, so we've got our O clock, we've got our quarter past, we've got our half past, and our quarter to the next hour. We have a quarter of the hour left. Now we need to fill in our other hours. I'm going to leave you to do that. Make sure that they are evenly spaced. Pause the video whilst you do that. Okay, so we've labelled our hours onto our clock face from 1 all the way around to 12. These are our hours. Okay, now we need to make two hands to move around our clock face. If you notice on the ones that you saw at home, one of our hands is smaller than the other. You need to go and make me two hands one small, one a little bit larger. Okay, so using a ruler and another piece of paper, I'd like you to make me two hands. I'd advise that you come to a sort of point at the end. You can do arrows if you want to, but the point helps um, your clock to be more accurate and you'll be able to read the time more accurately. Okay, pause the video whilst you do that. Right, now you've made those, we need to identify which hand is which, which one is the minute hand, which one is the hour hand. See if you can work it out. So our longer hand is our minute hand and I'm just going to annotate that onto my hand to help me to remember. And our smaller hand is our hour hand. Okay, so the small hand points to the hour 
and the, the big hand points to the minute. Right, now's the tricky part. We need to be able to attach these hands to our face. As you can see that I have punctured two, two holes and I've punctured a hole into my clock. Okay, so you might want to help get an adult to help you to do that. So I'm going to use a split pin to attach my hands to my clock face. However, I understand you might not have one of these at home. So you might want to find a paper clip and unravel your paper clip. Maybe use a bit of gardening wire or wire that mum or dad or nan or grandpa have sitting around the house. Um, you might want to use an earring, okay, because you can put the earring through the hole. The holes, plural, sorry, through your clock. And then you could attach the back of the earring at the back, okay. If you can't find anything to attach, you might want to use a piece of string. Anything will do. But if not... You might want to use a bit of blue tack to just attach the, the hands when we're telling the time, or you can just move them with your fingers, okay? So don't panic too much if you haven't got anything to attach it there. So we've attached our, our hands to our clock face. Next question, how many hours are in a day? Don't let this fool you because Actually, there are 24 hours in a day. However, you can have a 12-hour clock or you can have a 24-hour clock. This doesn't mean that a 12-hour clock stops for 12 hours until the day is up or that there's only half a day with a 12-hour clock. It just means it divides the 24 hours of the day into a.m. and p.m. Each of those periods consists of 12 hours from the numbers 12 to 11. Okay, so 12 hours in the a.m. and 12 hours in the p.m. However, a 24-hour clock runs from midnight to midnight and is divided into 24 hours. It is indicated by the hours that have passed since midnight. How will we do that when we only have 12 hours on our clock face? So at midnight, midnight is when both of the hands are on 12 and we're all tucked up in bed fast asleep. The hours will be expressed as zero because we are on midnight. So when it's one o'clock in the morning, when it's 1 a.m., it will be expressed as one. 2 a.m. is two. 3 a.m. is three. Four, five, six, seven, 8, 9, 10, 11 o'clock in the morning, 12. We are now at lunchtime and it changes to 12 p.m. We then continue counting. Instead of 1 p.m., it's now 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and then it's back to midnight again. So as long as you can count to 24 and you can move your hour hand around your hours, we are just counting from zero all the way up to 24. We're going to have a go at putting that onto our clock face. Okay, so if we move our hands out the way, we can just write underneath. So we know that would be zero. 1am would be 1, 2, we've already got these labelled, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We're then going to 13, we're just going to write them a little bit smaller, 14, 15. Pause this video and have a go at labelling the rest of our numbers in our 24 hour time. Okay, so yours should look a little bit like mine now. You have just labelled the digital 24-hour time. Well done. Digital means that the time is displayed as numerals. 
okay so you might see some digital clocks around your house my watch that i wear to school is a digital clock okay we can see that it's displayed as numerals there's no hands on my clock there we don't have a clock face and we don't have moving hands and a dial so that means that's a digital clock see if you can go and find any digital clocks around your house pause this video So some examples that you might have found are iPhones, iPads, you might have seen a digital clock on your cooker or on your microwave. We have lots of different analog and digital clocks around our house. So that might be something that you can play with younger siblings or with mum or with dad, um, finding these different types of clock around your, clocks around your house. Okay, right, so we've labelled our 24-hour time on our clock. Now, lastly, in another colour, I'd like you to get me another coloured pencil. We need to label the minutes on our clock face. First of all, how many minutes are in one hour? We should all know that there are 60 minutes in one hour. We have 12 points on our clock face, as we can see by our numbers 1 to 12. So if we divide 60 minutes into 12 points, 60 divided by 12. Have a go at working that out by using your 12 times tables. You might use the inverse. What is 60 divided by 12? 60 divided by 12 is 5. So at each hour, we're going to label our five times tables. So if I put a five here, that means when my minute hand gets to here, I am five minutes past the hour. Then I'm going to be 10 minutes past the hour. 15 minutes past the hour. And you're going to do your five times tables all the way round to 12. Pause this video and off you go. So check that yours looks the same as mine. Okay. Um, and last but not least, you may want to add four little lines in between your five minute markers. Why might we want to do that? What could these symbolise, these little lines? Have a look here on my pre-made clock, what might these little lines symbolise in between our five minute markers? They symbolise one minute, okay? So one minute, two minute, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, okay? So we don't need five lines. If you count like on a number line, one, two, three, four, five. Our five is already there. One, two, three, four, five, we're at our next multiple of five. One, two, three, four, five, on our next multiple of five. As we can see, because we're making this freehand, it might not necessarily um, be spaced out as accurately as we'd wish, okay? Obviously this one has been made for us, but try your best to space them out the best that you can. Pause this video whilst you continue to do that. Right, so you should have a completed clock near enough now. What I would like you to do now you've finished your clock is find somebody in your house that you can explain each part of your clock to. So you're going to explain to them the hours around the clock, you're going to explain to them the 24 hour time, you're going to explain the difference between the two moving hands, you're going to explain the five minute intervals around your clock face as well as the little lines in between your five minutes. Okay, you might then want to make some of your times on your clock yourself. Okay, make up your daily timetable as suggested earlier and get somebody in the house to test you telling the time. Okay, we haven't really covered telling the time yet. But now we've finished our clock, we'll be ready to start our first lesson on telling the time on a 24-hour clock. 
Okay. Well done, everybody. <laughs>